So will not practice today, Tremaine Edmonds, A.J. Epineza, and Mitch Morse, and the rest of the guys will practice in some, in some capacity. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. No. Yesterday, but any different plan for, for Trey White? Uh, one day at a time. One day at a time. Is there, how difficult has it been for you with Trey, where he's on the injury report, is healthy, seems healthy, but just can't get past whatever that last little hurdle is? Yeah, I mean, we just take it one day at a time, and um, you know, we're all encouraging Trey, and and um, you know, he's 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 climbed a big mountain to this point, and um, you know, we just keep taking it one day at a time here. Six and zero with Jordan Poyer. Sorry. <laughs> Six and zero with Poyer. Is he that indispensable? Or is, it, is that a coincidence that you're unbeaten with him playing? Well, he's a good player. He's uh, he's one of our leaders. He's a good player. He's physical, uh, intense football player. He helps our defense. Look at the success that they've had in the run game, but especially in the red zone. The Lions. Um, can you talk a little bit about Jamal Williams or uh, Jamal and what they do in the run game? Yeah, I mean, they, they do a really good job. Uh, Coach Campbell does a great job of, of setting a tone, it seems, and they're physical up front. They run the ball in a physical manner. Their wide receivers block physically. Um, they did a real good job. Do you feel like in a, in a performance that you guys had on Sunday against the Browns, against their run game, is that something that you think can kind of snowball a little bit and you know keep that momentum going? Well, we'll see. I mean, this is a good good football team. Um, I think the stats speak for themselves. For those of you that take the time to look at the stats and, and watch film, you know, you watch a good football team out there. They've won three in a row. Um, and, I mean, I'll read them off. They, where they Most plays are 20-plus yards in, in, uh, in this season. Uh, they're top five, most 30-point games in the NFL. Um, they're one of them, one of the top teams. Most plays with um, – 25 plus yard pass plays in the in this season. They're one of them, top five. So um, they shouldn't, you know, they're not sneaking up on anybody. They're a good football team. Given what you went through, the team went through last week, is this short week, despite the fact that it's a short week, seem a little bit more or less chaotic given all the circumstances that led up to you having to go to Detroit on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, we're in a, we're in a normal short week. We're in somewhat of a routine now, and what that, you know, that's. Obviously, in the past, and we're focused on focused on Thursday and the Detroit Lions. Those stats from the Lions and the chunk plays that was something the Browns were able to do early on on Sunday. Is there anything that you guys saw that was happening there that you can apply to this game? Chunk plays. Their offense being able to have some of those big plays. Detroit's on. offense. Yeah. Is there anything from this past game when you mentioned that Detroit yeah. has been good at that that you can apply? Yeah, I mean, we, we try and you try and pride yourself in not giving up big plays, um, you know, on, on defense. And um, they're a good offense. They do a good job, um, you know, doing things well from under center in particular. And, um, you know, I just think that they've done a good job moving the ball and, and playing good complimentary football. If Mitch can't go, especially with the, the offensive line's been playing better as of late, how much of a loss is that? Oh, I mean, Mitch is a big, big part of our offense, big part of our offensive line. Um, and our offense, you mentioned as of late, our offensive line, I've, you know, um, things take time once in a while. So um, don't, don't discredit their performance, please. Uh, Next question. From, oh, sorry, what do you see from Aiden Hutchinson when you look at him on film? Uh, active young player, rookie, um, very active, uh, disruptive. They line him up all over the place. Um, um, he does a really good job. He's, you know, high pick for a reason, and he's performed extremely well. Of playing on, you know, Thanksgiving, and then the recent tradition of this team kind of being in those games just wasn't mean to this franchise to you know, have everyone celebrating the holiday and, you know, turning on the Bills. Yeah, um, happy for all the Bills fans that will be at the game, A, and the ones that won't be at the game, that they'll be able to watch us on television and celebrate um, a holiday together and watch the watch their team perform and. Um, you know, we'll be away from, most of us will be away from our families, but um, hopefully get a chance when we get home to spend a little bit of time with the family. So um, it's just part of the job, really. And uh, we look forward to trying to um, give everybody something to, uh, to enjoy around, around the holiday. Sean, 
Uh, third and long defense, uh, the other day Cleveland, I think on their first drive, two third and 11s yeah. they converted. Is that an area that you've identified uh, maybe some potential weaknesses and w what can you do to maybe shore up those third and long situations? Yeah, for sure, Jay. Um, you know, we've got to do a better job. The rush and the coverage have to work uh, in better in better symmetry, if you will. And um, so we've got to do a better job affecting the quarterback and, and covering when the ball is thrown and making those plays when the ball is thrown. So those two work hand in hand. Time all year, you had a chance to double dip because you started on yeah. defense in the first half. Like yeah, coin Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How much? Can you just kick us into like your thought process towards the end of the half to making sure you have that ability to double dip as you're thinking about it? Yeah, I mean, um, I think our offense has done a really good job of of executing at the end of the half um, when we do have that chance and and give credit to them again coming out of halftime and, and getting points. I think it was a field goal after half. So. Uh, that's a 10-point swing in the game right there. That was a big difference for us. John, last year around the same time, the Tampa game, when, when this team was struggling on offense and trying to find its way in several areas, the running game seemed to give, provide the offense a spark. Is it too early to say there's any parallels from what we saw this past Sunday in Detroit with, with what we saw from Singletary and Cook? Or, and what do you make of what they gave you? Well, I mean, they gave us a spark. I mean, you got to have a physical component to your offense, um, you know, and, and that that doesn't have to just be the running game. You can be physical in the pass game, and that goes for defense as well. You're not just physical defending run. You got to be physical defending the pass as well. So, um, I just think overall overall physicality of a team is important, and in this case, in the run game. And what about the parallels to last year? Is it too early to say? And yeah, this year's this team's a different team, and um, last year was last year. This year's this year. Can you talk, can you tell us a little bit about just the development you've seen of James Cook since training camp up yeah. through the last game? Yeah, he's done a nice job. He really has. That's uh, part of, like I said, the the journey of coaching. The there's there's tough days and there's days that just make you smile. And when when you watch a player like James, um, you know. And the journey he's been on through his rookie season, you know, going back to the spring and, and then training camp and then early in the regular season and now <clears throat> that's fun to watch. And that gives you that gives you a lot of hope just as a coach that hey, you're doing things right. Um, and and it's fun to to have that pay off when a player's putting in the work and and it's working out for him too. That's that's uh, that's a good thing. Considering AJ Klein only left your team ten months ago, uh, how quickly can he get re considering all his history in your defense. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been around us uh, twice before, once in Carolina, obviously, and once here. Um, so I, I think it's it'll take a little bit of time, but I think it's coming back to him here. Josh, for a while, I know his practice was determined by how that day went and just going one day at a time. Is it still kind of in a rhythm like that, or are you guys able to project out a bit more with his own? With Josh, you mean? Yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, last week got a little bit. Um, um, abnormal because of the snow and the, and the routine. Um, it was supposed to be a little bit more routine, and, and then so it became a little bit unroutine um, at the end of the week there. And then this week, a um, little bit more back into the routine, um, but it is a short week, so he's adjusting, I think, well. Yesterday you mentioned that a lot of people expect Josh to be Superman all the time, and, um, you know, you mentioned how sometimes he feels like he has to do too much. What are those conversations like with him? And how difficult is that to sometimes have to kind of like reel him in, knowing the competitor that he is and his drive to want to win all the time? Yeah, um, I think that's good. I'd rather it be that way than to have to, you know, kick him in the backside and say, hey, let's go. I mean, he's he's extremely competitive. He's intense um, come game game day and, and – um, I think the best players that I've been around that are like that find a way to allow the game to come to them at the same time, and I think that's a that's a good good balance to have right there. Well, you said yesterday it was uh, going to be a stretch for Tremaine and AJ Evanessa to yeah. make it. What about Rousseau and Morris? Yeah, um, we'll see where it, we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, Mitch isn't going to practice like I said today, nor will nor will Greg. Um, so we'll just have to see where it goes here. Good. All right. Thanks, guys.